The, the film's based on a book, One for Sorrow. Can you tell us a little bit about when you first encountered the book and why you thought it would make such a good film? Yeah, I mean, I guess I, I, I found the book um, just as a reader. You know, just I picked it up in a bookstore um, looking for something interesting to read. And I just I fell in love with uh, Adam and Jamie and Gracie. Um, and I, th I think that one of the, you know, reading the book, like I, it, as a filmmaker, I'm always a little bit like, you know, I'm seeing it in my head a little bit. I'm sort of creating the images. Um, and it was one of those stories that six months later, I was still imagining what those scenes would look like. And that's when I was like, okay, let's, you know, let's see if the rights are available to this. And, you know, if it, if it's something that I could, I could get my hands on. I've read a lot about the film that talks about the the kind of gay subtext to it, but to me, it's not so much subtext; it's just text. There's a little gay subtext. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you talk a little bit about why you think that the the horror genre, or the kind of supernatural, lends itself so, so well to stories of the gay experience? Um, I mean, I think that you know, for me, you know, the gay experience has so much to do with being an outsider and. Um, and feeling different and, and sort of, um, you know, f feeling like uh, the world around you is not stable and is sort of, you know, is, is uncertain. And, uh, and, you know, I think the, the horror genre is great because it, it sort of allows you to, you know, you, you can focus on the, you know, ghosts or you know whatever the you know the actual the horror elements are and slip in sort of anything else that you you know that you want um i mean i don't know that they're actually that perfectly suited for each other because you know with this film in particular horror fans are you know it's a little bit too gay for them and then oftentimes gay audiences are like well, it's not really gay enough, you know? I mean, that's, so it's, it's sort of, we, we ended up in this weird middle spot, which is like my sweet spot, but, you know, for most people, it's a little bit like, it leaves them a little confused sometimes. And, and the, the film's very much focused in a kind of teen environment, and The Ruins was about younger people, and your short films have dealt with teenagers too. What is it about this kind of age group that interests you as a filmmaker? Um... I, you know, I don't know. I think that it's because um, maybe at, like at, when you're a teenager, every decision you make, whether it's you know about yourself or about about someone else or about a relationship, it feels like a life and death situation. You know, which is just something that lends itself so well to you know being told on film. Um, you know, everything takes on this crazy importance that you know, kind of as an adult looking back, you're like. Oh, you know, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> you know, it doesn't. It doesn't matter if they like you or if you know if, if she did like you or if she didn't like you. You're going to be fine. But you know, the the drama of of how important that stuff seems when you're a teenager, I think, is is uh, is great for film. Yeah, I mean, that was that was kind of a challenge because I mean, part you know, part of making a film like this is you know, it, it's incredibly. Um, difficult to finance and so you know I mean we, we would never have like a very specific start date like okay we're you know we have all of our money and we're starting now so we can really start casting um, the casting process you know it was just a matter of calling in tapes and 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 reading with actors both in New York and LA and all over the place over the course of maybe a year and a half um, and Noah who plays um, who plays Jamie uh, he and I have the same agency in LA, and he, it was, I guess it was one of the first scripts that his agent had sent him. And so he put him, he, you know, he, he grew up in, uh, in France, and um, he put himself on tape reading both Adam and Jamie. And, uh, you know, but probably four years, three, three years before we ever even really started casting the film. Um, so it, it was kind of funny actually, like, three days ago, I'm moving in New York, and so I'm going through my office and studio, and I found the tapes that he had sent me, you know, as like a 14-year-old reading Adam and, and Jamie. Um, but, you know, it was just about finding that right, the right kind of pairing between, between those two boys, and then and sort of working out from that.
I think the, the film looks so great. There's such a kind of distinctive mood to the film. Um, can you talk a little bit about the kind of aesthetic choices you made? I mean, I know that you have a background in photography. Did that kind of influence the, the look of the film? Yeah, I mean, only in that, um, you know, I had a very specific idea of exactly, you know, I, I think that coming from stills, I'm really used to dealing with wardrobe and hair and makeup and, and sort of, and framing. Um, in a way that made me sort of, it, it makes it second nature in a little bit, in, in a certain way. Um, but, you know, Darren Liu, the, the, the DP, and I have worked together on a bunch of different uh, projects. Um, and, you know, I mean, it's, we, we work really well together and it was just kind of, I mean, just kind of happened naturally. I mean, it was informed by the locations and, you know, the weather on the day we were shooting. And it, we had this kind of great, circumstance where basically for the first, I mean, it was only a 21 day shoot, but for the first sort of 15 days that we shot outside, every time we stepped outside, it would start to snow. Like the most beautiful, like, you know, snow that would just kind of drift down. It was, it was we were really lucky to be shooting it uh, at, at that specific time. That was in the book um, and it was something uh, I mean that I loved about the book, and I definitely wanted to, you know, to keep in there. Um, you know, in the in the book, it's actually a bit more probably of a love story than than the film. I mean, they actually, you know, they you know they get naked and they kiss. I mean, they don't have sex, but it's 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 quite a bit more sort of a romantic relationship than than it is in the film. Um, but the closet has always been there, and it's never, it's not like, it's not the most subtle subtext at all, as I'm sure it's not lost on anyone in this room. <laughs> and why did you move away from that more kind of romantic side to the story between the boys? I, you know, I, there was something that I thought was kind of more romantic about not making it front and center. You know what I mean? I, I kind of liked that, um, I mean, one of the things that I that I fell in love with was the fact that, like, you know, Adam doesn't say he's gay, and and Jamie doesn't think that he's gay necessarily, and there was this, this kind of ambiguity about how you know who they all thought that they were that that I found really true to you know what it sort of feels like when you're 16 and you don't really know who you are yet, um, and I mean I, I certainly I you know it's it's there. I don't have anything against you know it being a gay movie, but it just felt somehow more complicated, you know, if, if it wasn't so on the nose. You know, and I think that those relationships are really complicated when you're 16, 17. It was, it's fairly faithful in that, like, Adam and Jamie and Gracie are, are pretty much the same characters as are in the book. Um, in the book, sort of three quarters of the way through, um, there's like a page where it says like, and they caught someone for the Jamie Marks murder. And then it's sort of never mentioned again. And it was just sort of something that happened, some guy that, that, that murdered him, um, which didn't feel like belonged in the, in the film. Like it somehow, I mean, it, it, not that it felt like a letdown because the book was very much about their, you know, their relationship, but it felt like this version of it needed a different kind of sort of explanation of, of, of what happened. Um, and it was one of the things that I was really nervous about playing with, but, um, you know, when I sent Christopher the, you know, the version of this, of the, I mean, I sort of told him what I was thinking about and he was, on board, and he was like, oh, "That you know, that should have been what was in the book. Like that, you know, that's so much better. That's so much more in keeping with Jamie." And you know, so I mean, he was he was pretty enthusiastic. So, you know, but I mean, I guess that's a pretty huge difference. The I mean, the the sound design was uh, done by this guy Eric, who I had worked with before, on on both of my uh, previous films. Um, he was also the editor, and. Uh, you know, when, when we were editing, we used a lot of uh, temp music from, you know, the, uh, Francois Uchefaux, who was the composer. And, you know, it's one of those things where you, you, you use the temp music and then you think, uh, we'll never, you know, we'll never get him, you know. 
And I mean, we were, you know, like a month out from going to Sundance and we still didn't have a composer. And, you know, he just happened to be available. And so I jumped on a plane and went to Paris and we did the, you know, the two of us in his apartment, you know, did, did the entire score, you know, in, the, in about, you know, six, seven days. Which, I mean, it, I, I mean, I couldn't be happier with the way that it sounds. You know, good question. I, there, I mean, there there weren't specific films. I mean, uh, I mean, I feel like maybe uh, I was I, one of the first sort of indie movies that I ever saw was *River's Edge*, which I mean, it's not a ghost story. It's not a you know, it has, um, you know, it's it's not genre at all. But I, but it was about how uh, community reacts to a, like a, a kid's death, and actually uh, his name is Jamie also, which uh, you know I didn't realize till after, but. Um, I mean, I, I think that that was probably you know one of the only ones. I mean, I think that we, um, we the the DP and I, we kept trying to find movies that to reference, and we just kept coming back to the short that we did together, which was Bug Crush, and it was one of those like, well, you know, we could look at this, but like, what about what we did in Bug Crush? Because we had never done a feature together. This was our first. Uh, it was his first feature, and it was our first time doing a feature together. So, you know, we were we were we were referencing what you know what we had like sort of started to do earlier.